Καλησπέρα και από μένα, η τιμή είναι απόλυτη δικιά μου. Ε, Γιάκοβε, ευχαριστώ πολύ για τα πολύ καλά λόγια σου. Good evening. Uh, my name is Stefanos Kallis. I would like to talk about the theme is emergencies. I would like to talk about a group of people that I really love. I've come to work with them the last 25 years. Those are firefighters in the United States. And they face emergencies every day. And as Yakovo said, uh, somehow, because my grandparents came from Greece, because I love Greece, but because I also want to make people healthier, uh, you will see that the journey, and we talk a lot about journeys tonight, the journey has brought us back to the Greek way of eating. So, indeed, firefighting, you all know it. It's a very, very, very dangerous job. In the United States, about 100 firefighters lose their life every year, every year. This has not changed despite technology, despite improvements with safety. It's about 100 every year. And year after year after year, it's the same. And you're probably wondering, well, of course, they die because they're burned up or because of smoke inhalation, because of the toxic gases, or maybe a building has fallen on them. But if you see the chart here, over 50% of the deaths are either due to heart attacks and strokes. So sometimes they do die of burns, or asphyxiation or building collapses. But basically half of the deaths are due to heart disease. And you can see that here, that heart disease dwarfs burns and asphyxiation as causes of death. How does this happen? It turns out that stressful situations, stressful jobs, emergencies, can provoke a heart attack in a person with an underlying problem. Firefighters' work is strenuous. They have to climb stairs. They have to break down doors. They have to exert both aerobic power as well as static power. The equipment they wear is quite heavy, up to 25 kilos and it completely encapsulates them, so they cannot dissipate heat. They become quite dehydrated. And of course, the environment of a fire is unfriendly. It's not a friendly workplace. It's hot, it's dangerous, it's chaotic. The adrenaline surges are tremendous. So fighting a fire, and this has been studied elegantly by many of my colleagues in laboratories using simulated fires or adapting monitoring equipment to firefighters fighting fires, the response is on the human body. It affects every single organ system in the entire body, but in particular, the heart and the cardiovascular system. Over the last 15 years of 25 years that we've been working with firefighters, we've published numerous articles trying to explain how does this happen? What are the risk factors? How could we learn better? How could doctors prevent this? And we've published it in some of the greatest medical journals that exist in the world. And more, and more, and more articles, and talking more to doctors. But what about prevention? What are the implications for prevention? All of us who have been studying have come back. One of the biggest problems firefighters face is the obesity epidemic which faces all of us in developed nations. And even in the developing world, it's coming on. An epidemic of obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. How could we change this? And here we see firefighters of today, the recruits, the young recruits in their 20s, they're as heavy as the veterans of 40 and 45 years old in the 1980s. And there are many reasons, the shift work, the sleep disturbances, the way that firefighters eat, the lack of exercise, etc. But we've now come back to say, maybe a Greek idea, maybe a Mediterranean idea, maybe the Mediterranean diet can help these brave individuals, men and women who risk their lives every day to protect us. Yakovo spoke about the Mediterranean diet, which in Greece we need to come back to. What is it? It's traditional ways of eating that developed around the Mediterranean, the beautiful Mediterranean Sea, which, of course, is the natural home of the olive tree, and hence olives and olive oil. But it's not just that. People were poor. 
and they eat mostly plant-based foods, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, olive oil, fish from the sea, white proteins, cheese occasionally, and sparingly red meat on holidays and sweets for special occasions, with moderate intake of alcohol, etc. The benefits of this diet have been studied and enumerated extremely well over the last 70 years. But first, let me say, referring to olives and olive oil, the safety record is longer than that of aspirin or any drug which we have in our pharmacy. It goes back thousands of years. The safety record is undisputed. But this form of eating reduces the risk of heart disease by approximately 25 to 40 percent. It reduces the risk of diabetes, obesity, and precursors of diabetes again, by up to 40%. It reduces the rate, the risk of cancer, by perhaps 25 to 30%. It can prevent or decrease the risk of cognitive dis dysfunction, up to and including Alzheimer's disease. It improves the quality of life, and it lengthens the length of life, macrozoia. And so there are myriad mechanisms for doctors and scientists to study, but the basic issue is that in terms of heart disease and cancer, which is also cancer is a big concern of the firefighters, this way of eating is healthy because it reduces inflammation in our blood. It promotes healthy blood vessels, healthy cells. And we said, how could we apply this to these brave public servants, the firefighters? We had done a study for other reasons of exercise in firefighters, and we took about 800 of them from the middle of the United States, from the states of Missouri, Kansas, and Ohio, far away from the fancy Greek and Italian restaurants of Los Angeles and New York, in the heart of what is middle America. And we looked at their dietary questionnaires, what they had told us about how they eat, and we found that those in the 25% of firefighters whose diet most closely followed a traditional Greek diet compared to those in the 25% lowest who followed mostly the most American, the worst, most plastic, toxic diet. There was a 40% difference in the risk of metabolic syndrome, which is a precursor of heart disease and diabetes. There was a 40% lower risk of weight gain. And their profiles for cardiovascular risk markers such as cholesterol of different types was much improved, and that was significant, even after adjusting for the size of their body, for the amount of exercise and other things they did. The next step was, but could we get people in the United States to believe this? It was only in 2015 that the United States dietary government recommendations recommended Mediterranean diet as a healthy option for Americans for the first time. In that same year, we also did surveys of firefighters through the unions and other organizations, and we showed that even though most of them were not following this, and they really had little idea about what it was, they might be willing to give it a shot. And we were able to write a nice proposal, and we convinced the federal government to give us $1.5 million to undertake a randomized controlled study in the city of Indianapolis, where we had several other projects. So let me tell you a little bit about this project. We have enrolled over 400 firefighters in the project, and we've completely uh, created an internet or web page-based system of educating the firefighters, which includes a unique Mediterranean diet pyramid. I'm sure many of you have seen Mediterranean diet pyramids before, but this one is completely firefighterized or dedicated to firefighters. And we try to teach them simple ways of changing their diet in small steps. First of all, of course, our beloved olive oil, we encourage them to use it for all salads, for preparing and marinating all foods, for cooking all foods, and of course, for adding more olive oil to the table to add flavor. Emphasizing the, the plant-based foods and proteins and fibers, and the leaner white meats, and simple things such as replacing energy drinks, soft drinks like Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, with water. What better beverage? What animal doesn't drink water? We should too. And of course, exercise and good sleep. 
because it's not just a diet, it's a lifestyle. We've created videos for the firefighters to learn from, shopping lists. With each video, we teach them basic principles, such as, again, just a simple step, changing from butter to olive oil, giving up sweetened drinks for water. In addition to shopping lists and recommendations about how to eat over a week, we've worked with famous chefs such as Maria Loy uh, of the famous Greek restaurant Aloy Estiatorio in New York. She dedicated and donated hours and hours and weeks of her time to come up with recipes for the firefighters and their families. And last week, after planning for several months, we came up, we had the privilege of partnering with a TV show, which is made by firefighters for firefighters and their families. It's called Firehouse Kitchen. And a retired firefighter from the FDNY, or the Fire Department of New York, Ray Cooney, he goes around the country and he sees how firefighters are cooking in their fire stations. And a friend of mine who was also a firefighter, he talked to Ray, he said, these guys are doing something positive, they're doing something good for firefighters. Maybe you could do a show around what they're doing. And Ray was generous enough to come out and do three shows around a cooking demonstration we did with an Italian-American firefighter also from New York, which you'll see in a minute, which he did in Indianapolis, and a cancer symposium, which the firefighters held, and I gave them a talk about Mediterranean diet as a natural way to fight cancer. So, a quick video compilation or montage of scenes, which I'll narrate from when Firehouse Kitchen went to Indianapolis. Again, this is in the heart of America, the middle of America. So, Firehouse Kitchen goes to Indianapolis. And, of course, this will be two or three episodes, but the whole idea will be teaching firefighters, firefighters speaking to other firefighters and their families, how to shop healthy, how to cook healthy. And, of course, you see for the occasion, I'm dressed a bit differently because I have to mix in with the guys. This is Ray in the middle and Mike Cazziola, a good Italian boy from New York on the left. Here we are shopping. Lots of vegetables, different colors. He's going to make a meatloaf, rouleau, but he's using ground turkey instead of ground beef. So he's telling Ray to put away the pork. Now we're explaining to the firefighters why eating berries and other fruits are important for their brain and their heart. And of course, here we are. Now we're back in the fire station ready, and Mike is going to be start cooking. This is the meatloaf here, as you see, lots of colors and vegetables. And of course, everything was done with olive oil. This is all olive oil. So you get the idea. I think all of our speakers in some way have mentioned the concept of a journey, and I'm sure we'll be hearing that more. So of course, the great Greek poet Kavafi wrote Ithaki based on the other great Greek writer, Homer. And it talks about life and at your experience as a voyage. So, uh, in a nutshell, last week, my personal voyage, Odyssea, brought me to Indianapolis. Tonight, I'm so fortunate and lucky and blessed to be here with you in the beautiful old city of Rhodes. And I just want to tell you that tomorrow, something special, starting tomorrow, my journey takes me to another very, very beautiful part of Greece, Halkidiki, uh, together with my colleague, George Stamo, who is a television producer, a Greek and American television producer, and some of the best nutrition professors in the world from Harvard University, from other American universities, from universities in Spain and elsewhere, in Greece and Italy. We will be taking uh, all of the Congress participants on a special voyage in Halkiviki. They'll be learning about the traditional Mediterranean and Greek diet, and then every after, in the mornings and every afternoon, they'll be living this experience. So they will visit uh, and pick olives right from the tree, starting on Monday. They will go to 
an olive mill or Eliotrivi, and they will drink fresh olive juice directly from there. They will go to a winery and see how wine is made. They will go to Tirocomio and see how cheese is made, and on and on and on. And of course, they will live and breathe the beautiful Aegean Sea of Alkidiki. But it's also, it's not just an opportunity or ifkeria for the people from the United States and Canada to learn about Greek eating. It's an opportunity for Greeks to go back, as Yakovos was saying, for Greeks to go back to the way that their grandparents were eating. So we have to learn, sometimes there are a lot of smart people, but what Yaya told us was right. So with that, I thank you for your attention. Καλό βράδυ. Καλό βράδυ. Καλό βράδυ.